stop doing regular steady state cardio. V Shred is a f-ing superhero. He's here to save us from the shit because we know steady state cardio is bad because. Just stop doing it. Just stop doing it. That's reason enough for me, Mr. V Shred. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm the creator of the RP Hypertrophy app and a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx in New York City, in the state of New York, in the country of the United States, on the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the solar system, and I think the Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. And I have a very important thing to do with you guys today. It's going to be an activity in which we cooperate together. It is to critique and examine and parse and explain the V-Shred workout, diet, whatever advice V-Shred is giving out. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that there is one individual whose name is V-Shred, and that's that's what I'm going to call him, Mr. V-Shred. I'm sure he has a real name, and I don't care about it. Off to the races. Which body type are you? I have an answer to that. There is no such thing as body type, and science has confirmed that about 10,000 times. Body types are myth, so I'm not a body type. But let's see what Mr. V Shred thinks about that. You want to know what's crazy? Yes. And what's sad? Yes. About the fitness industry when it comes to getting in shape. Also, yes. People are making all these different fitness programs. People like you, V Shred. But they're not talking about the most important piece. Lying to people about results that they're going to get on your programs? Oh, I'm sorry, I digress which is making sure that the program actually fits your body type and actually fits your goals. Tell me you didn't go to school without telling me you didn't go to school. Let's hear about body types. If you're trying to lose weight, the last thing you need is to follow my workout plan where I'm trying to bulk up. Okay. The workout plan doesn't have a ton to do with whether you lose or gain weight. That's actually almost entirely dictated by your diet and your energy expenditure. If you're very physically active and you don't eat a lot, it doesn't matter how you train, you're going to lose weight. And if you're training hard, you're going to keep all of your muscle and lean down. If you eat lots of food and your physical activity is more limited, you're going to be gaining weight. And if you train the exact same way, just like he does, then you will gain muscle and gain weight. So really, uh, the workout specific to your goals is already overstated. If you're trying to bulk up, the last thing you need to do is follow some weight loss plan that's not going to work for you and your body type. And so I don't think your body type changes when you pick a different goal. Maybe there's a contradiction in terms here somewhere. I'm, I'm sure we'll get to how the f- body type has anything to do with anything. But so far, I just talked about goals, not body types. I get not doing a plan that's different for your goals, which also isn't true in this case. But how does body type weave in there at all? What we did to combat this. Well, f- who is we? It's you and a f- cell phone camera. Was we over here at V Shred created. But you, your name is V Shred. Your first name is V Shred. There's V Shred. First name, last name. A free body type quiz. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to have to pay my own hard-earned money to take a body type quiz. Luckily, it's free. That takes into account what shape you're in. What shape you're in has nothing to do with your body type. The body type is supposed to be something that is immutable about you. It is a way that you are shaped that muscle and fat are added into that equation or subtracted from it. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what he means by body type. And I guarantee you he doesn't either what your exact goals are and your body measurements. Okay, that's not a body type quiz. That's a body type goals and measurements quiz. And it basically gives you three free tips based on your body type. Eat less, you fat f- Eat more protein while eating less and lift some weights. You're welcome. I saved you the quiz. And then also has a little hidden surprise at the end of it. So, oh, f- Wait, 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 wait. If there's a hidden surprise, you're not going to stop me from being able to click on it, are you? I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to do whatever it takes in that surprise. If it's that entering the top of the funnel for your bullshit Ponzi fitness scheme, count me in. If you're looking to get in shape, understand if you're an ectomorph, a mesomorph, or an endomorph. Yep, those aren't real things. Those are all mythical. We do have a YouTube video at Renaissance Periodization about how and why. It's got the video. I linked that shit. So if you're not sure which one you are, head over to vshred.com. vshred.com. Take our free quiz on our homepage. Free quiz on homepage. And I'll see you there. He won't see you there, but you'll be in his funnel and he'll try to extract money from you, providing you substandard services that probably lead to disappointing results. What's up, guys? What's up, V Shred? I got a quick tip for anybody who is trying to get in shape. Not anyone who is trying to get in shape, because according to the last thing you said, general tips don't work. You have to take the body type quiz. If I'm of the wrong body type or kind of goal, then no tip is going to be good for me that's also good for you. Now you're saying there's one universal tip that's good for us all? Well, this is just confusing. 
stop doing regular steady state cardio. I mean, guys, everyone knows regular steady state cardio is like starvation in Africa, the massacre in Myanmar, right between them, a steady state cardio and the sheer devilishness it exerts on our poor f***ing unsuspecting world. V-Shred is a f***ing superhero. He's here to save us from the shit because we know steady state cardio is bad because... Just stop doing it. Just stop doing it. That's reason enough for me, Mr. V-Shred. Because why? You asked why. V-Shred's going to cook you up some knowledge. Because it's not good for you. Okay. Steady state cardio is not good for you, says V-Shred. Counter opinion. American College of Sports Medicine. All the doctors that study the heart and the lungs. Every doctor that is concerned with health. Every professor of exercise and sports science. But there is only one V-Shred. Let's hear some facts, facts. Why isn't it good for you? Because first off, it takes like, what, 40 minutes a day? Or whatever. He doesn't even know because he doesn't even do it. He's like, I don't know how long people do it. 40 sounds like a fine number. And I don't have 40 minutes because I hear him making that cheddar. I got 18 businesses, five side hustles. Can't be bothered with the shit. Just to get a cardio session in and you burn, what, 300 calories? Yeah, you can burn more than 300. But yes, burning calories takes time but maybe he has some uh, a good retort here. So if you have to do that every single day, and you obviously don't burn calories after you stop, so. You continue to burn calories after you stop, but not a ton, so we're just trying to give him as much credit as possible. 300 calories for 40 minutes of horrible exercise. If you're burning 300 calories in 40 minutes, it's, it's actually not that horrible. That's not impressive. It's not fun, so you don't stick to it very long. Versus doing hit cardio. Okay. So hit cardio, he's gonna sell us on the hit cardio bullshit. This is a training fad from about 15 or 20 years ago. Everyone thought it was gonna be miraculously better than steady state cardio, and they were wrong. Why were they wrong? What he's going to do is estimate later that hit cardio burns a ton of calories after it's finished. And the reality is you don't burn very many after it's finished. So the epoch excess post-exercise oxygen consumption was always overestimated with hit cardio from the very beginning. More, uh, well, more recently, 10 years ago, we found out it was vastly overestimated, making hit cardio not as cool as people thought it was going to be. In addition to that, hit cardio is even less sustainable than steady state cardio at a lower level of exertion because it has more impact and it causes more fatigue. So hit cardio is something that people who are, don't have a lot of time and or are lazy attempt to do instead of steady state cardio and generally fail almost as much, if not more than with steady state cardio. Now, hit cardio does have a place. It can be part of an integrated program, but so can steady state cardio. It's not one or the other. Hit cardio is not categorically better because yes, it doesn't take as long, but it also doesn't burn as many calories. And no, the, the epoch does not make up for that. And it also beats you up more. So uh, it's more fatigue. I wonder if he mentions any of that. And this is when you do like 20 seconds max intensity, then a 20 second rest, and you do that like 10 times. So the workout's only like five minutes and you burn more calories during the workout and after the workout. I, I guarantee you, you don't. If you're doing steady state cardio and it's not the easiest thing in the world, you can, bore, you can burn many more calories in a 40 minute session of steady state cardio than you could do anything for five minutes long. This is straight up false due to excess post-oxygen consumption. Oh, weird. You're getting into some science, my man. 20 years out of date. Um, something I don't have time to explain here, but if don't worry, he doesn't know how to explain it. If you want more free tips like this, head over to V Shred. Funnel. This guy's a fucking marketing master. As soon as you get to thinking you know some shit, you're in the funnel and they're offering you fucking upsells. I gotta, I gotta learn from him. What are we doing at RP? Our only funnel is like, let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. Uh, see, we have a funnel too. Don't you like it? Don't you want to click on our funnel? Whee! Like, uh, Scott, what was that one bitch with the Emerald Castle and the, and the tornadoes? Uh, 
Dorothy, Wizard of Oz, not our funnel. All your money comes out during that time and we collect all of it. That's how funnels work, I think. If you feel like you can't make much progress in the gym. Yes. Or you're holding on to too much body fat. Definitely. Or your sex drive is lower than ever. My psychiatrist says it's actually too high and it's a problem. But uh, I'm curious, rope me in. Or you frequently just seem down in the dumps and- I'm Just in life, man. Just like, ugh. You should blah. Help me, V-Shred. Help me find happiness. Feel like you're aging faster than you should be. I don't know how people estimate how fast they should be aging, but uh, definitely I'm aging at all, which is to say too fast. V-Shred, it. I need your help. Today I want to talk a little bit about a hormone that your body might be low on. It's not testosterone, is it? Which is testosterone. How did I know that? And one thing that's important to understand is that it's normal for testosterone levels to decline as you age. So far, so good. Low test levels are something that you should be aware of, even in, let's say, your 20s and your 30s. Now, the good news is- Good news. There are easy things that you can do from home. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be compelled to drive anywhere to improve my testosterone. No, I need it to be at home and I need high test levels, ideally right now that don't require going to the doctor to slow or maybe even reverse this decline. Yeah, the doctor is only gonna give you prescriptions for exogenous testosterone, which will definitely fix your ass up. Then you gotta shoot drugs all the time. You're a f***ing fiend. Maybe V-Shred can spare us all that nonsense and get us the real testosterone boosting secrets that we've come here for. In fact, they only require a trip to your local grocery store. V-Shred. You just promised us we could do this from home. Now you're saying this testosterone cure requires a trip to the local grocery store, which is not my home. Grocery store, no, that's not gonna work. And I'm gonna tell you about a couple of natural herbs. Okay, I'll start with the actual science. There is no natural herb that dependably raises your testosterone in a measurable way that has been confirmed multiply through a plethora of studies. Not fenugreek or fenugreek or whatever the f not any of that other weird sounding shit, not tribulus, not shit. Sorry, herbs don't do pretty much shit in almost any situation. There are no natural herbs to raise your testosterone levels, but I'm sure he's going to give us the typical bullshit. They're super powerful. They are not super powerful. So you absolutely need to know about them, but there are also a couple of others that are easy to find that you probably have in your fridge or your pantry. I already have steroids in my fridge and pantry. Wow. That just may not be as potent, but good nonetheless. I'll just take more of them. Same potency. One area that researchers have studied is how your diet can impact testosterone levels. Diet's not an herb, but cool. And they found that increasing foods that contain testosterone mimicking nutrients and supplementing with certain natural herbs may help. He's not good at reading off the f***ing cards. This does not sound very fluid, but he's doing it, my man. And there's two nutrients that seem to be especially crucial to your diet. Let me guess, cholesterol and saturated fat. When it comes to increasing testosterone, and those are vitamin D. Oh, I was wrong, vitamin D. Okay, excellent. And zinc. And zinc, I know nothing. Starting with vitamin D, according to researchers, it can help boost testosterone levels by up to 90% in one study. Yep, this is what we call cherry picking. Most of you, if you take all the vitamin D in the world, will see no increase in testosterone whatsoever. But every now and again, people who are vitamin D deficient see improvements in all sorts of hormones when they no longer become deficient, but you're probably not deficient. 200 healthy participants were given either a daily dose of 3,332 IUs of vitamin D or a placebo for a full year. Cherry picking. Just one study at a time, because there's a bunch of studies that found diddly dick for this. He's not reporting them. And compared to baseline values, there was a significant increase in total testosterone levels, bioactive testosterone, and free testosterone levels in the vitamin D supplemented group. In one study, they actually restricted zinc in young, healthy men. And Don't do that. Eat normal foods that have zinc in them. Found that after 20 weeks of low zinc, test subjects saw a significant drop in serum testosterone levels and oysters are a great source of zinc. The f He just randomly like throws a food at us, like oysters. If you don't like oysters, you can also get a good dose of zinc from crab. Damn, this is the fucking expensive diet. Oysters, crab, what's next, lobster? According to National Institutes of Health, Alaskan king crab provides 43% of your daily value of zinc. You know how fucking expensive Alaskan king crab is? Jesus Christ, what kind of advice is this? And if you don't enjoy eating seafood at all, 
or you're worried about mercury levels, egg yolks contain a good dose of vitamin D and beef. Ah yes, finally, common foods you probably eat anyway. I will tell you guys this, almost all information which tells you one micronutrient, one potential beneficial thing it does in a few studies, and then good sources for it is just a waste of your cognitive bandwidth. There are a trillion different micronutrients if you include phytochemicals, phytonutrients. They're all available in every food. There's too much diversity to account for. And if you just eat a whole food diet of mostly healthy foods, lots of veggies, fruits, whole grains, lean meats, and every now and again you eat some junk food, and you have a multivitamin, multimineral tab, you are gonna cover everything, all the mechanisms, all the weird stuff. So this one shit at a time bullshit, again, you're not gonna be in a position where like, oh man, I need to get horny. Better eat three ounces of crab. You will be sorely disappointed. So eating some whole eggs instead of egg whites in the morning, or even adding a burger to your diet could actually help you a ton. Adding a burger to your diet will not help you a ton. All right, if you guys like that, we have an extended cut available for members only, so hit the join button to become a member. Another food that can actually help to improve serum levels of testosterone is one that most of you will be glad is on the list if you have a sweet tooth, and that is honey. Oh, thank God. I knew any diet in which I was going to be restricted to my honey intake will never work for me. Luckily, honey helps with stuff and nutrients, and thank God that it does. I'm gonna eat tons of it. Researchers have tested honey in both human and rodent trials, and they found that honey did, in fact, increase serum test levels, likely because it helps increase. Guys, these are incredibly transient, low level effects that amount to nothing. Nobody ever got jacked eating extra honey. See that guy with the veins in his shoulders and he weighs 350? That ain't honey. That's called trend balloon. Luteinizing hormone, which is a hormone produced by the pituitary gland. I like when he tries to speak science using pituitary gland, I think. So food number three on our list is garlic. This is the worst video ever. <laughs> Garlic, it has a connection with another hormone, which is your stress hormone, which is cortisol, which is super important because cortisol is produced in the adrenal gland. That's an important feature. Which is where testosterone is produced. Testosterone is produced mostly in your testes and not in your adrenal gland. Basic science fact wrong. Thanks, V-Shred. How shocking. Scientists have found that if your cortisol levels are too high, which could happen due to anything from lack of sleep to mental stress. Yeah, don't fix lack of sleep with mental stress, just eat more garlic. You could be blocking your body's ability to produce testosterone. That's true. Let's find out how garlic helps. So if your cortisol is too high, it won't matter how many oysters you eat or how much honey you put in your tea, your test could be negatively impacted. It actually would matter because if your cortisol is high but you raise your test, the balance is what matters. So wrong again, V-Shred. And that's why it's so important that in addition to eating foods that could potentially boost test, you should also eat foods or take supplements that reduce cortisol. <sighs> why are we still here? Just to suffer. There are no foods or supplements other than advanced pharmacological drugs that reduce cortisol. You also don't want cortisol reduced all the time because cortisol is a very important part of the stress pathways that actually cause adaptation. So what you want is for cortisol to be very high during your workouts, rapidly fall off after, and be low most of the time throughout the day. Don't eat garlic before your workout, I guess. Garlic has been linked to being able to do just that. Be shred for audacity and false confidence in 11 out of 10. For good advice somewhere peppered in there, six out of 10. For tons of bullshit that you wish you had never heard, it lowered my IQ and now I feel sick to my stomach, uh, 10 out of 10 on that stuff. Why the fuck do I do this for a living? See you guys next time.